Hi everyone, I'm back again with the shirt. I uh, want to point out a couple of items that I have used on this shirt so far. Um, I had done another video earlier and I ended up erasing everything as far as my demos. So I can only speak to this, but hopefully I can, um, I'm going to get a camera. I've decided the phone is just not working as well and I'm going to go ahead and and, and upgrade my videotography to, to an actual camera so I don't delete my my stuff or, or I can actually do better for a change. Anyway, I wanna point out what I have used on a lot of the green right here, this pink, the yellow, and I'm gonna actually address the yellow in a different way, this blue. All of these were done with these 40 acrylic markers by Arteza. Um, I am very happy with Arteza products. They also have a great fabric marker that I sell to my students. And um, just in general, their, their paints, their acrylic markers, everything seems to be really good. Now, I want to pull out what I did. Um, I'm peering into the box and looking for the white pin. Here it is on the side here. So let's bring those over from where I had them earlier. Okay, so what I did here... Um, and I want to pull the phone away so that you can see. I colored it here with the lemon yellow. Let's get that for you so that you can see that. There we go, lemon yellow. That I colored right here. And you can see it's pretty dull. I mean, you can tell it's yellow, but it's a very dull yellow. What I did over here, same color, but this time I applied the titanium white first and I let this dry, and then I colored over with this. And I have to say, this is really, if you're going to paint on denim and you want the actual true color of the coloring tool, you really need to put a base coat down of something that will hide that blue. It's just a fact. It will change the colors. You know, like, now I gotta say, the greens went down really well. And in fact, you know, I, I did some blues here. Now, but that is supposed to be teal. And I don't know, I can't even tell if it's teal or if it's just a dark blue. So, I mean, again, this is the limitations of using some of these tools on denim, but I did wanna just point them out to you. Now, some other things that I've used, and I'm gonna zoom in again. Here on this flower, you can see not only on the orange, but on the purple and the fuchsia. And then here on this red flower right here, do you see how sparkly it is? Well, that is from a product called, yep, Unicorn Spit. Um, I discovered this product just by chance looking at some YouTube videos from the manufacturer. Um, you, you, Unicorn Spit actually has quite a number of good videos to look at. So if this is interesting to you, First of all, go do a search on Unicorn Spit and you'll see plenty of videos pop up. One of the things that I like about this stuff is that it works, look at that, on fabric and it is washable. So I've done this with several other things. I just haven't done a, a, a video on it yet. So I did wanna bring this to your attention. Today I used this color, which is called Golden Gosling. The purple is called Violet Vulture, cute names. I mean, whoever's got the marketing over there is doing a great job. Dolly Firebird for the red. And then that fuchsia color is Starling Sasha. And I think they have about 10 colors. They may have more in the sparkly. I know they have other colors. They're just not sparkly. And my whole point today was to use the sparkly stuff to go with everything else that I'm doing on this. So my next trick is going to be actually using ink tense pencils. Now I know you're going to tell me, oh, but Michelle, you've always said you can't use ink tense pencils on denim because it changed the color. Yes, that is still true. But I have this stuff here from Pro Chemical and Dye, and let me pull it out so that I can show it to you. It's called Opaque Extender, and this is the base of their opaque paint. My thought is I'm going to grate up some inktense pencil. I'm gonna let me pull this over because I have it right here. I'm going to end up grading up this kind of golden yellow. In fact, I do believe that's the color I have here from inktense. This is an ink part of an inktense block. So I'm gonna grade up the color. 
I'm going to melt it with um, probably my own fabric medium, or I may even use the Delta textile medium because it's relatively thin. And I'm gonna create a paint concentrate. Then I will mix in the opaque extender and then try to paint it on the denim and see what happens to the color when I do that. And part of the reason I'm doing this is because we all, particularly my students, you all have these intense pencils. Um, and I want to try to stick with what you already have. You know, that's my big thing with all of this. Um, I don't want you to go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to paint a denim shirt. So I'd like to see if I could create something that you can use with your existing products with only maybe a small expenditure for the extender rather than going out and buying all these other wonderful products um, that I use. And then you are great. They are awesome. I mean, I, the, first of all, this, this is probably under 40 bucks, you know, go check it out. Arteza. I also sell it on my website, but, um, it, you know, these, these, these items can mount up at a while. And again, if you're going to spend 40 bucks for one shirt, that does seem to be quite a bit, uh, rather than that, why not spend a few dollars for the extender and then use your current stuff? So stay tuned. I will be back with the results of the graded ink tense pencil with the extender on the denim shirt. Okay, this is a quick video on creating opaque paint with ink tense pencil. Um, what I've done first is I have graded. Let me just kind of move this over so that you can see this. You know, I just graded a little bit of this Inktense block into my paint palette. I'm going to move this over and get it out of the way. Okay, so there you are. Fine graded bits of Inktense pencil. Now, what I think I'm going to do first is create a paint concentrate first. Um, I'm going to use the Delta textile medium. It's slightly thinner and I think it will melt it quicker. This is going to probably take about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'll be pausing in between all this, these steps and, but I'm just going to go ahead and just add just a tiny bit, like, you know, maybe the size of a quarter. You can tell already it, it, it begins. In fact, um, just to give you an idea, I'm going to use the tip of a paintbrush and start mixing this um, and you can see the color uh, starts working. I've done other videos with, with doing this method before, so this is nothing new. The new part's going to be is adding the opaque extender. I'm going to get, oh, look at that. See, it's working already. Uh, just keep melting. That's that's the whole thing about ink tense pencils. They're so wonderfully versatile that I really do want to try to make paint for denim so that we all don't have to go out and spend a fortune. Okay, so the next thing's going to be is once that melts, I'm going to add this opaque extender. I have added additional color to my mixture as I kind of thought the color was a little bit on the weak side. This is totally trial and error. So if you are attempting to do the same thing, start light. Like I always say in class, you can go light to dark, but it's darned hard to go from dark to light. So I'm going to mix this up and see if it's the uh, concentrate that I want. And we'll go on to the next step, which is mixing the extender. So I think I'm ready to mix. Now I have these little scoopy spoons. I don't know where I got them. And they, they show up with stuff sometimes, and I just throw them in my stash of things to use at a future date. So I'm just going to grab... Now, notice, by the way, you see how thick this is? Um, consistency of sour cream is my first reaction. Um, let me just kind of stir it around here. You can see it's very, very thick, nice and uh, um, smooth. And so I'm just going to put... I'm not even going to put a whole teaspoon down. I'm, I'm just going to put a little bit because who knows? And then just, you know, put the rest of it back. If it'll ever come off the spoon. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to put that right here. Who knows? I may come back and get some more later. Um, always, always put the lids back on your stuff once you finished using it. Even if you just, you know, tighten it down 
it's, it's a shame to waste supplies. Now, you can see I've got this mixture, pretty goldy yellow, orangey, whatever it is, because I, I actually want to try to apply it right there to that flower um, and see if this is going to work. So um, I'm going to put just some of this concentrate in a third container. Um, I'm going to grab a blob or two, I think I'll go for two, and start mixing this. And of course you can see it gets really thick right off the bat. Apologize for the shadows. I promise you guys I'm going to get a camera and it's gonna happen this week. Even if I have to put it on a credit card, I'm sick and tired of trying to use my phone and talk and do all this stuff. Unless somebody out there has a great idea. I mean, please don't suggest stands. I literally have five or six stands that I've attempted. None of them work to my satisfaction. I've had the ones that clamp on the table. Um, I, I, I just need something where I can manage it better than holding a phone or, or doing all of that. And cameras tend to work better on tripods anyway. All right, that, yeah, that's actually looking pretty good. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead, take a nice big glob of it. Actually, let's really, really, really mix it good. Sorry, um, I, I truly do want to give this its best shot and you need the color mixed as well as possible. So I'm just gonna take a block blob of this and start, <gasps> oh, okay. Well, you know, as it thins down, you can still see the blue. I know I want this to work so badly. I, I need to be careful not to get too excited right off the bat. So it's going on like an acrylic paint. It's smooth, I, I will say that. I, I can feel that it's going into the weave of the denim, which is great. Um, and, and yet the color is staying up there, right? In fact, if you look really close, it's even getting on the thread and it's coloring up, covering up the thread a bit. Now I'm gonna grab some more and come over here and put some more in. Ooh, y'all, I may have found it. Now, of course, the proof is in the pudding. When I go to wash this, you guys know that it's first and foremost, it must pass the washability test. So I'm probably going to continue using this yellow. I've got another couple of flowers up there. Um, let me move the box. You can see these flowers up here, um, although I might use a different color simply because I've got a lot of gold in the paw to begin with. Um, but there's some other areas right here that I could probably use the yellow and, and, and at least put it to good use. But so far, so good. In fact, yeah, look at that. It's definitely covering up the thread. That's a good sign, by the way. If something's opaque, you can. the first way I can always tell that it's good opaque is if it goes over some of the black thread and covers it up. That's a very good sign. So we'll let this dry. I'm going to move forward and use it in other locations, but I gotta tell you, just on initial, let me just really zoom in here, that's looking pretty darn good. Um, so stay tuned. We'll see what happens once I finish. Uh, and then I'll wash the shirt and come back and we'll take a look at the results. So I am frugal these days, as I think many of us are, with inflation biting into our fixed incomes, as, as has been. So I took the all the stuff that I had, including I even scraped the spoon off. And I put it in this little container. Now these are little um, bead containers. If I put the cap on just like this, it's gonna last about a week. But if you have press and seal, 
Um, this is what I'm going to do later on. I need to go buy some, but I'm telling you about this, and then I'll try to follow up and edit the video and put this in, where I'm going to put a tiny bit of press and seal on top and then screw the lid on. That will actually probably allow this to last maybe a few more weeks, maybe a month. Um, it's not meant to be long term. But I make up so much different paint and do so many tests that I hate throwing this stuff away. So, um, once again, just a little tip for you. If you are into making up your own paints, um, this might be a way to save the little bits and pieces um, just for further use. In fact, the front of this shirt has a cat and I am probably going to treat it and make it a ginger cat, which is of course orange, and what a great color to start using on that ginger cat. Okay, got the press and seal, and um, I cut out a little chunk, and I'm just gonna lay it here on top, kind of pressing it down, getting the grooves, in, try not to push it down all the way onto the paint itself, but just so that when I go to put the, oops, of course I dropped it, hang on. So I'm actually putting that on, and actually this just kind of snapped into place, you heard that. So there you have it. It's got a little bit of the press and seal on it. This will help keep the paint from drying out. Um, again, no longer than a month. I mean, no matter what, it is going to eventually dry out and harden. But if you are working on a project and you need some paint that you're, say, working on for the next few weeks, this is a way to preserve it. So not having been satisfied with just doing it with the Inktense pencils, I have decided to continue this experiment with some of the other concentrates that I have uh, purchased lately. Um, one of the other favorites that I've run across, and I've, I've been testing this significantly, I will not really release it until I'm, I've got some more colors on the way. Uh, when I test all of her colors, then I'll let you know if this is really what I would use on fabric or not. So far, there's only one of her colors that did bleed. This is not one of them. This is her, let's see, Pure Magenta. Again, colorart.com. She's the one that I used the, oops, the Prism Pour um, earlier. Now, this stuff does work. I've tested this. this. This works on fabric. This is great stuff, but I like to test everything. So I've gone ahead and I've put a tiny bit of the concentrate in this paint palette here. Let's just mix this up real quick. Let me just tell you, y'all, <laughs> I love these, 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 I'm really, really hoping these work because um, this stuff takes uber tiny, tiny bit and look at that incredible color. Her stuff is so vivid that um, it, it appears that it's just super, super, super rich color. Um, you know, I'll probably use it on a show quilt, which of course I don't wash, uh, simply because I love it so much. And as long as I don't wash it, it, it the color works really well. Okay, let's go up here and try this here real quick. Um, I have this flower right here. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of that on. Oh, look, it's coloring up the thread. Let's get all the, the, the high-powered tool I use here in my fingernail to get some of that off. And a paper towel to wipe the fingernail so I don't continue to mis misplace my color. Oh, uh, wow. Ooh. Yep, very happy with this. And notice... The color's going on quite, um, it looks very similar to the color that I made in the pan. I mean, you can tell that just by what, what's on the brush. And, and I'm using a pour brush, so I just grabbed the first thing I have. It's a watercolor brush, 
you know, you, you watercolor brushes are just too soft. They just really, really are. Um, and I've, one of these days, I just need to get rid of them, so I'll quit grabbing them. Because um, you guys are probably all looking at me going, what the heck is she using there? Because um, you know I love my gold taclons. You know, the other brush that you couldn't consider, by the way, is a stencil brush. I pulled one out the other day. I had a bunch of old stencil brushes back in the day when I used to do that kind of stuff too. Um, and they work really well for scrubbing. Now they don't, they're not very good for finessing, but they're really good for scrubbing. So I don't know. What do y'all think? Um, I'm happy with that. Let's again, see what this is going to do dry. And of course the test is going to be whether or not it washes well. So again, it'll be a part of the test that I've done with coloring that flower right here. By the way, I did go back in and put another couple of coats on that. I did go over that little dot with it, and I did put it in the uh, yellow that's up there. So we'll see how this works. Stay tuned as always. Well, y'all, I'm not done yet. Okay, I have one last thing to show you for this shirt. And uh, that is some more unicorn spit. Now, there, as I mentioned earlier, there's there's probably only about 10 colors of the, the glitter unicorn spit. So what I've been using when, say for instance, this blue, although there is a blue, but maybe I don't wanna, it's a dark blue. So maybe I don't wanna cover up this beautiful turquoise that I have down here but I want it to sparkle. Well, they have a, I call it kind of a clear, it looks it looks uh, white in the bottle, but it's not, it's called Iced Egret. Oh, but it does say it dries clear, and they're right. <clears throat> I'm gonna use just a tiny bit out of the cap, and I'm gonna show you how it goes on on this turquoise, and you can see immediately, let me get a little bit more here, it has holographic particles in it. And that's really what's giving it the glitter. So it's very, very cool stuff. Uh, I was recently down in the Rio Grande Valley. The ladies down there absolutely loved it. They put it all over everything. Um, their favorite word for it was instead of unicorn spit, they call it unicorn snot. Uh, they're a lively group down there. That's why I love going down there and visiting with them. Anyway, so you can see it, it it's a kind of um, an all-purpose glitter that um, once it goes on, I think you could put it on anything. So, you know, we're, we're going to go from that turquoise, which I'll finish later. Um, but now I'm going to dip my brush into the bottle directly and bring it up here to this pink because this pink was looking a bit sad. And voila, see there? It sparkles up the pink. And I, I, you know, I could do this entire shirt. I didn't even need some of the other colors. Although I think you can tell that by that, just looking at that orange right next to this pink, you know, having the, the stain with the sparkles in it works very well as, 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 it, as it does with the clear. So, there you go. I have inundated you guys on this video with all sorts of stuff to color on denim. The last part will be after I have finished this shirt and I have washed it to see how this, um, this magenta that we made and this golden yellow that we made from Ink Tense Pencil and from the uh, concentrate, the color art concentrate, how well it holds up to wash. Stay tuned.